As you already know, we're traveling to beautiful, monumental, majestic Germany. And what a fantastic moment for us to be featuring Germany. You may have noticed Germany making headlines around the world this week, thanks to its recent elections on Sunday after 16 years. Angela Merkel of the Christian Democratic Union will step down as chancellor and Germany's left-leaning Social Democratic Party will take power in the 20th Bundestag with its leader, Olaf Scholz. Um, I, I, I'm sure some of our speakers this evening might have some thoughts and things to share about the election. So feel free uh, to uh, start thinking about some of the questions you might have for them. Um, but we're also one week away from German American Day, which is on October 6th and celebrates the German heritage of millions of Americans, um, uh, the Amer millions of Americans proudly claim, which I am one of them, just a small bit. Uh, and it's also prime time for Oktoberfest, um, which is a festival that originated in Munich, but now we see it being celebrated around the world. And it's a festival that we in America really, really love. So uh, this evening, we have three very special guests with us. We have the Honorable Carolyn Gay, who is the German Honorary Consul in Arizona. Reiner Marx, the Director of Business Development for Viking Cruises, and who is our very special guide for this evening's virtual tour, and Dieter Bullman, Executive Director of the German American Chamber of Commerce West Arizona Chapter. So thank you all three for being here with us this evening to share more about Germany with our, with our participants this evening. Um, First, to kick us off this evening, I'd like to first introduce the Honorable Carolyn Gay. Carolyn was born in Munich and grew up in Kassel, Germany. She attended school in Kassel and studied at the universities in Nuremberg, Germany, as well as Sevilla, Spain, which is something we share in common. Uh, she has lived in Scottsdale now for 18 years and, as already mentioned, is our Honorary Consul of Germany here in Arizona. She's also the managing partner of Kiban USA, a company exclusively importing and distributing Kiban products from Switzerland to the U.S. And Carolyn and her family celebrate their heritage frequently in their home and are excited to share that with the Arizona community. And it is such a pleasure to have you, Carolyn. Welcome. Well, thank you. It is my pleasure to be in this wonderful group. Thank you for inviting us and thank you for making Germany a destination, especially in October. I think it is um, very a very special month in, in Germany. Uh, I think a lot of uh, people want to travel to Germany or already traveled. Many, many go to big cities like Munich or Berlin or Frankfurt, maybe Hamburg. Um, but um, there are also many areas of Germany with the little towns. My husband always says, oh, we don't know those little towns where we, you know, where we really experience the Tudor style houses and the little stores and uh, the countryside and uh, for every anybody who wants to travel to Germany, I really would encourage them to, of course, go to the big city and go to the, I don't know, uh, Oktoberfest with 20,000 pe people in one tent, but also go to the little towns, uh, to their little Oktoberfests there. Um, you know, and you will probably hear from Raina quite a bit about the also little little towns and about um, what Germany has to offer. We don't have the mega cities like in the States or in, in Asia, South America. We have, um, I, I think Berlin is the biggest city with about 3 million people. I, I might be wrong, but approximately. And uh, I read the other day and uh, so, uh, come to Germany and um, uh, travel the the small towns off the beaten paths, the wine regions, the beer regions. We have one region north of Nuremberg, for example, where there is the highest density of breweries. And um, so we have a lot of special 
uh, areas also in the north on the North Sea. So that's what I would like to encourage everybody. Uh, we are, of course, focusing on Oktoberfest. So we have this, what was it called? Ultimate Oktoberfest giveaway. It is a very, very heavy basket. So um, yeah, I would love to get it. <laughs> and then we also focus on Oktoberfest with our presentation. We have um, something called Obatster, which we are going to show how to make. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not going to take so long, but it's um, a lovely dish. It's a cheese dish uh, that is served in Bavaria, actually. And uh, we have all kinds of variations of that dish through Germany, actually, not only in Bavaria. So welcome to, uh, to this destination series. Thank you, Kristen, and uh, your team, uh, Global Ties, for inviting us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, I, someone's going to be very lucky winning that basket. You might have to be pretty strong to carry it though, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's wonderful. We're actually going to, as those of you that have joined past um, editions, you know that we like to give away something uh, related to the country, the destination that we're in at each, uh, at each episode. Um, and so we have this beautiful, beautiful basket, uh, German themed basket this evening that we're going to be giving away to one lucky attendee. So you have to hang on and until the very end and you have to be present to win. So um, stay, stay with us. So that said, we're actually going to be moving into our tour. Okay, we're, we have, we are so pleased today to have uh, Reiner Marx with us, born and raised in Germany. Reiner is looking back at more than 18 years of onboard experience with various renowned river and ocean cruise lines around the world. Combining his passion for travel, meeting interesting people, learning about history, foreign cultures, and the culinary world, he has worked as a chef, a sous chef, and an executive chef. He was trusted with lead culinary positions in fine restaurants and hotels in Russia, Switzerland, Austria, the United States, and Germany. And during his career, he oversaw the hotel operations on board of numerous cruise ships as hotel manager before he joined the Viking sales teams as the director of business uh, development in 2012. And he now lives in Scottsdale here in Arizona with us um, and with his wife, who is also a former Viking cruise director, and they have three children. Reiner, so good to have you. We'll let you Thank take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This is really a fantastic opportunity. I was very, very excited. I am very excited to talk about uh, my home country. Um, I still have a lot of passion about traveling uh, back to the old world. And let me show, let me share actually um, uh, some slides. I prepared a little PowerPoint here for you, of course. Oops. All right. Just bear with me. I swear we had it set up. <laughs> oh, here we go. It always likes to reset on you right yeah, before you're supposed to present, right? <laughs> right when we're ready to go, it resets. So here we go. So this should show well, does it? Excellent. So yep, again, thank you so much for the kind introduction. I wish I could start every day like this with such a warm introduction before my workday. Um, but um, I want to talk again today about my home country, our home country of Germany. And, uh, you know, being being a member or part of the river cruise or the cruise industry, uh, we tend to pursue, we tend to travel the world on rivers, on oceans. And so forgive me if I, you know, kind of do the same thing to Germany, but that is actually a very easy way to get around in Germany. Um, and uh, some of the, mo the greatest sites, and I handpicked some of the sites that are pretty much in every, car in every part of Germany. I try to be fair and nice, but those are some of my personal favorites. And uh, based also on what we see at Viking, those are uh, interesting spots uh, for, for travelers that are new to, uh, new to traveling to Germany. So this is how we, we handpick these kind of ports. And we're gonna start in beautiful Cologne. Um, and uh, here in Cologne, lots and lots of history. One of my favorite ports, to be honest, because you are in a city that is thousands of years old, right? Founded by Romans, so lots of ancient history, modern history. One of the best chocolate museums that I've ever been to. And I, I'm honest, I, I do have a bit of a sweet tooth. 
Uh, it's in walking distance, very, very nice to do. You get uh, to experience this beautiful old cathedral. Cologne is one of the highlights. It's almost on the must visit, must do list. Uh, of things to do. Um, of course, if you have the chance to do maybe a day trip, it might be a good idea to, to go on, on, a, on a day trip uh, to, to visit the Middle Rhine, right? This is, if you will, the most scenic and most romantic stretch um, of the Rhine. So I wanna kind of highlight some of these beautiful ancient castles here. Some of them nowadays are five-star restaurants. Some of them are youth hostels or hotels or even uh, gourmet restaurants, right? And uh, <clears throat> they, all, they all have a lot of history to experience. So this is definitely something that I highly recommend doing. And there are so many of these ancient castles there. I believe on the Middle Rhine alone, you have 28 castles as you sail there for six hours. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, when you go into those castles, uh, you do have, uh, Castles that are seven, eight hundred years old, such as the Marksburg Castle, not related to my family, I wish, but this is a castle that um, has been around since the 1200s and uh, it is the real deal. So, this is not Disneyland where you can poke a finger in the hole of the wall, but this is real thick stone walls. You see how the servants live there and how the local rulers live. It's an absolutely amazing experience to see that kind of part of the culture dating back to the Middle Ages, right? Um, Koblenz, another great city that I wanna highlight because it's on the confluence of multiple rivers, the Moselle and the Rhine. Great spot for a wine tasting. Carolyn, you mentioned earlier that wine is a big part of the German culture, right? So there's, I wanna say we are known to be a, a beer loving nation, but there's equally, uh, an equal focus on wine culture as well. And Germany does produce some of the most amazing wines uh, when it comes especially to the whites, right? And here on the Rhine, you're all familiar with the Riesling wines, the Gewürztraminer, Spätburgunder. Those are, those are wines that, that grow here where the wines on the Rhine are a little bit more fruity, a little bit more uh, minerally on the Moselle because of its uh, east-west, uh, if you will, uh, uh, flow, you have more sunlight and these wines, these Rieslings from the Moselle are actually a little bit sweeter. So great food wines all together. And uh, one thing that all of these wines connects is that they're mostly uh, cared for and harvested by wine. You see how hard it can be, uh, these steep slopes on the middle right here. You can't really use a lot of machinery. So all of that has been done or will be done by hand, which guarantees a fantastic quality of German wines. Now, uh, of course, uh, if you have the chance to, uh, to do a wine tasting, to visit those vineyards, I encourage you. There's, you know, this is the best way to experience a culture, to pair it with local foods. And by the way, Caroline, great choice on the Obatster, because what goes better together with beer and wine than cheese, right? So these Rieslings um, pair really well with, with many of the German foods. Speaking, of, uh, speaking about uh, regions to explore, to taste wines, to, to experience maybe some German hospitality. And you mentioned also that we're talking about the metropolitan cities, but equally about the small towns. I picked this little one, Rüdesheim on the Rhine. Rüdesheim is a beautiful, charming little town that is uh, located here on the, on the Middle Rhine. And uh, this famed little Drosselgasse uh, which is a cobbled street that is very narrow, but very, very famous. There's a lot of little taverns that uh, have music, uh, you know, that have live musics in the evenings, beer gardens, wine gardens. This is ultimately the way to experience German hospitality, or we call it Gemütlichkeit, right? Coziness, Gemütlichkeit. I don't think it translates actually quite well into English. One of the specialties here, and forgive me if I get carried away, is the Rüdesheim coffee. I'm a still a chef at heart. So I point out a couple of these highlights. The Rüdesheim coffee, a, a coffee that is made with local brandy, the Aspach Uald, and topped off with, uh, first of all, it's lit, right? It's set on fire and topped off with some strong coffee and some whipped cream, some chocolate shavings. Absolutely fantastic. Goes as a coffee drink, but also as a very wonderful dessert after a great meal, right? So um, more charming areas, and we're getting into the Black Forest area here. The Black Forest is dense, kind of a 
forest that uh, is known to the ancient Romans, right? They called it the Black Forest because it was so dense that they didn't see the sunlight marching in there. Uh, one of those little villages, small towns is called Reisach, but so many things that can be explored here from the famous um, uh, Black Forest cake, the Black Forest ham. Wine making in this region produces different wines than we will taste them on the Middle Rhine and Upper Rhine, but uh, a lot of cultural things, cultural uh, gems that you can explore here from bread making, uh, the, the local cultures uh, of uh, Spätzle that you can experience, that might be definitely something that you want to try once visiting Germany. And of course, the famous Cuckoo Clocks, that's what, probably one of the most you know, if you if you will, most popular uh, uh, souvenir still to date uh, that uh, people bring back home from Germany to the United States or wherever they are from. Now we're getting into uh, the area of uh, we're moving a little further east here from the Rhine to the Danube to, to the center center south of Germany to Nuremberg, the city where Carolyn has a little bit of history of living. So Nuremberg certainly has a lot of World War II history. Uh, this is uh, the city that the Nazi party back, back in those days were founded. And, um, you know, there is, a, there is a really interesting World War II tour you can join here, learn about, uh, learn about that area, uh, that era. Um, but also you have the courthouse, the old courthouse where the Nuremberg trials were held. And uh, that is definitely worth a visit. Still the same courtroom to some extent looks the same way it looked back in the days of the Nuremberg trials. But the city itself, um, parts of the city were, you know, were able to be restored to its old glory with the beautiful castle high up on the, uh, on top of the top of top of the city, uh, a fantastic stop to experience and explore. And here you're in the heart of Franconia. This is kind of like an area where I would say the love for beer and wine is, is I want to say equal. It's Franconia. Uh, this is the area where you have this high density of breweries, but also the famous Fox Beutel wines that come from this area. Uh, my hometown of Regensburg <clears throat> here in uh, Lower Bavaria, a beautiful medieval town. And uh, I'm, I'm a little partial when it comes to, you know, pointing out sites to see. But uh, Regensburg is a, is a gorgeous town. The entire city is actually blocked for uh, motor cars. So you have to have electric cars, bicycles uh, to get into the city, to the inner city. So it's a medieval town that is absolutely charming and beautiful. Nuremberg known to have the largest and most impressive Christkindle market, Christmas market, Regensburg market uh, that you see here, uh, a little bit more humble, but very charming as well. So a very, very uh, longstanding tradition dates back hundreds of years, those Christmas markets. And those are very, very popular amongst travelers as well. Now, since we are in this part of the world, I also want to point out the beautiful city of Passau, a small town that is located on the confluence of three rivers. Absolutely fantastic town uh, with a long-standing history as the largest church organ in the old world here in this beautiful St. Stephen's uh, Dome and uh, dates back to more than 2000 years ago as a Celtic settlement. Uh, here, this might be a great city to experience some of the, uh, of a part of a Bavarian culture, Bavarian, Austrian, even Swiss culture the beer garden culture, right? This is a, a wonderful way. Folks in Bavaria love to sit outside in their beer gardens, enjoy a glass of wine or a beer, um, have hearty Bavarian food. This can be warm or cold dishes that are being served. And most of the time they're laid out and designed to share. The Obatz that we're showing here today is one of those typical beer garden foods that you will find for sure in, 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 uh, in beer gardens all across Bavaria and even in Brew houses. So great opportunity for, for someone to meet locals practicing your German. They can practice their English. That's normally how this turns out. Enjoy some live music, maybe. So beer garden culture is strong in Germany. And of course, the apple strudel, uh, we have to at least mention it, right? This beautiful concoction of dough and apples that, are, that is baked to this uh, delicious, uh, delicious cake, if you will, this delicious uh, dessert. Now, since we are in the area, I also want to kind of talk a little bit about the surroundings of Passau. We are close to Munich here. Now, you can actually uh, travel on the romantic road. That is a, a road that uh, kind of drives from or, or takes you from Würzburg to Augsburg, Rotenburg of the Tauber, Dinkelsbühel, Nordlingen, uh, to the beautiful cities of, uh, to the beautiful castles 
near the Alps. I think everybody is familiar with Neuschwanstein, the one that we're looking here, the uh, Cinderella castle, right? That's the original, that's what it looks like. And um, again, this is right outside the city gates, not too far away from Munich, uh, merely a day trip. But once you're in Munich, uh, you have to experience, especially this time of the year, I think it's still going on for a couple more days, the, the fantastic and world uh, famous Oktoberfest. And this is just one of the beer tents could hardly tell it's a tent, right? It looks like a long uh, beer hall, but it's actually a tent. All of the major breweries in town, they have set up tents here that hold thousands of people and the operation is incredible to see how this is organized. You make online reservations for your tables and it's fantastically organized. So uh, just as a word of advice, make a reservation when you plan visiting the Oktoberfest, make your reservation online and be there on time because without reservation, it's gonna be really hard to find a table here. And here you try more fantastic dishes that are so unique, so local to Bavaria, such as the Weisswurst, the white sausage, best enjoyed uh, with the pretzel, some sweet mustard and a little word of advice, it needs to be eaten. It should never see uh, the, uh, uh, it should never see noon, should uh, be enjoyed before noon and uh, is best joined with a glass of beer, right? Local beer is the, the beverage of choice here. So still <clears throat> traditions run very strong in Germany and especially on these Volksfests or Oktoberfests, you will see people uh, put in their traditional uh, wardrobes and their traditional clothing uh, and sometimes even perform uh, traditional dances. Tradition is kept alive through clothing, through dances and the traditional music as well. This is really not only a uh, event to, to celebrate and drink, but also to keep traditions alive that date back a very, very long time, right? And of course, uh, since that is the main event, you have plenty of opportunity here to try some of the beers, the Oktoberfest beers. They are, you know, served in these enormously big glasses, these beer steins, right? Now on the Main River, uh, this is kind of like the heart of Germany, a very, very, if you will, understated uh, area, but uh, it's one of my favorite areas because you have cities like Würzburg here on the, on the Main River. It's very picturesque, Bamberg, small towns that are featuring half timbered houses, uh, such little cities like Miltenberg here, you know, you see these half timbered houses that have these beautiful flower bedecked balconies right right there along these cobbled streets that date back to medieval times. And sometimes you feel like the time stood still when you walk through these little towns. Um, it is, they have their own charm. It's amazing and interesting this to go into a large city. Small towns, they do have their own uh, appeal, if you will. <clears throat> Speaking of large cities, Würzburg is one of those cities along the way. And here you have to see the Bishop's Residence, right? This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, a fun side story is that two famous artists were kind of offered the contract to do the interior design, to do the interior paintings of this uh, Bishop's Residence. Uh, one was uh, Michelangelo and the second one was Tiepolo, both uh, Venetian artists. And for some reason, Tiepolo won the contract over Michelangelo. So. This is how we have this beautiful and absolutely incredible World Heritage Site here in uh, Würzburg. There's nothing uh, unlike anything you've seen. So if you have the chance to visit Würzburg, this is a must stop. From here also only a very short uh, distance to the beautiful town of Rotenburg of the Tauber, one of the most scenic and beautiful small towns that really looks like in the 12th, 13th centuries. Um, <clears throat> you can visit here from uh, Würzburg, it's very, very close by. Now, before I come kind of like headed towards the end of our little talk uh, on Germany, I want to stop in our capital in Berlin. Now, Berlin, a very, very cosmopolitan, vibrant, lively city. It feels very young, right? After the unification of Germany, there was, uh, for a couple of years, it felt like it's a city of cranes and construction, but I think these are mostly gone by now, there's not that many left, uh, you know, building the city, <clears throat> but uh, this city was first mentioned in the 13th century and went through quite some history as the capital of Prussia, Weimar Republic, Third Reich, and uh, <clears throat> was split then in West and East Berlin. Of course, we all know the story of this terrible wall that was built there in Berlin. And uh, 
into the west side, the free west side, and the, on the, very, the less fortunate East German side. So a lot of history for us to explore here in Berlin, a lot of culture, a lot of culinary. It is the seat of the government uh, nowadays, right? And of course, a great opportunity to uh, familiarize yourself with some of the highlights of the city, such as uh, the Brandenburg Gate or learn about the wall, the Checkpoint Charlie, uh, the famous Hotel Adlon or the amazing Kurfürstendamm, just to name a few of the highlights that, that are worth seeing and should be on your tour. Again, we're now on the eastern part of Germany and here stands out a small town that is absolutely gorgeous, you know, from an architectural standpoint, beautiful. But that's not really the reason why I've added it here. It is one of the most visited cities and small towns uh, with Vikings cruises. Uh, it is the Lutherstadt Wittenberg. So Martin Luther um, actually started his reformation movement here. This is, he was a preacher here uh, in this town and uh, remained here for, for all of his life. So here in Wittenberg, you can see his house, his birthplace, the church, the pulpit where he preached from. This is the very place where he uh, started the Re reformation movement. <clears throat> A little further south, uh, you will find the gorgeous city of Dresden. This is a gem, an absolute gorgeous city, <clears throat> unfortunately heavily destroyed in World War II, but beautifully restored to almost its old glory. Uh, also called the Florence on the Elbe. The Elbe is the river that kind of flows through the city. Um, worth mentioning is the Dresdner Neustadt, this 19th century residential area and the Dresden Castle Complex, which is in the heart of the town. Church of Our Lady that was restored to its old beauty is absolutely second to none. This is a, an incredible uh, architecture to, to admire. The Dresden Zwinger, it's beautiful, imposing Baroque architecture. So, so many things to explore. And then of course, right outside uh, this, uh, this city of Dresden, you will find uh, the Saxon Switzerland. This is definitely worth some, to visit for someone who wants to hike, who wants to take pictures of the gorgeous nature uh, sites here in, uh, in Germany. Visit the uh, Saxon Switzerland. There's the Alps down south in, in uh, Bavaria, between Bavaria, Austria and Switzerland. But the Saxon Switzerland is absolutely, it's a smaller area, but not less charming. Uh, definitely worth a visit and, and maybe spend a day or two in the area hiking or sightseeing. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I think uh, Carolyn is next with some cheese making, right? Yes, she is. Thank you so much, Reiner. We're going to pop over to Carolyn just just a second. I just wanted to let you know, and I probably should have let you know this before we started today, that uh, we tend to have a really active chat as our as our presenters are going. And so you, you might want to take some time just to look at, at some of the comments that came in. But I think uh, everyone was very, very excited. Um, obviously, um, the emoji function, I think, was created for this presentation. Uh, we have the castles, the beers, celebrating <laughs> emojis. So I was freely using using those. Um, and thank you uh, to quite a few of you that Yvonne, um, Dieter, for putting in the information of our sister cities, our German sister cities uh, for Tempe, Fountain Hills, and Glendale. And Dieter's going to also share some more information at the end uh, today about some of the uh, German-owned businesses uh, here in the Valley as well. But before we move to our q and Hey, we're going to head back over to Carolyn. Where did Carolyn go? I think she might be getting getting um, the things that she needs to show us to uh, how to make the obatsta. Oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to prepare everything. Well, actually, our chef, the chef of the Treffpunkt prepared it for us. So I Wonderful. will turn this around here and we'll see how you can see. Can you see this? We can. Here? That's perfect. Ah, okay. So obatsta is a cheese. It's supposed to look like this at the end. <laughs> so let's see if I can make it. Uh, we have here a, uh, a piece of brie and uh, whoo, piece of brie. And I think Raina, you should have done that because you are the chef. I'm just a <laughs> uh, cream cheese, butter, don't look at it, but it uh, makes the difference. <laughs> uh, 
we have onions and uh, we have salt, pepper, and a tiny little bit cumin. And then we have paprika, actually. And we mix that together and we'll see. So it's pretty easy actually to make, if, you know, those are things you usually, you might have at least at home, right? So I want to see if it was, oh, if I can do that properly, you just mix it together. Do you and have then, to, I guess, melt, is it melted butter or just softened no, butter? No, no, no. It's just, everything is soft, but okay, I think soft. it's easier to make a little bit easier to make with a lot of, um, with uh, a bigger, with a bigger piece of cheese and stuff, but let me see. And, um, you know, some people have recipes where they put a little bit of beer in it. We don't do that here, but that's definitely an option. Raina, is your res Oberster recipe with beer? I have a few because they make them a little different in Nuremberg than they do them in Munich. So there's there's a few of those, you know. I, I, I'm a big fan of the beer one, definitely. <laughs> so, well, it looks kind of, I mean, I would need to steer it a little bit more, but let me let me see that I can get this a little bit smaller. You see, it's I'm not a, doing that easy, every day. It's huh? an easy it's, recipe though. Yeah, It's a super easy recipe. I mean, everybody Quick. can do that. Everybody can mix that. And if the, um, if the parts are, you know, at room temperature, it's really easy. And we had it on Tuesday evening, right? At the World Women. Um, That's right. Uh, meeting and or, or gathering. And so you eat that with, with pretzels, with yeah, bread. Okay. You put it then in here. And you have a lovely, put a little pretzel in. And bon appetit. Wow. Guten appetit. Guten appetit. <laughs> that looks great. I know it's great. I tried it. And the best part, the best part is that it's it seems like it's an easy easy party dish so if you kind of forgot that you were having friends over it will take what about five minutes to put together right you're absolutely right and if you have a little beer just put a hint of beer in if you want it <laughs> sounds like a good plan yes <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and, you know, we'll actually, maybe what we'll do is we'll follow up with those, um, those ingredients again, but main ingredients were the camembert, right? The camembert. Yeah, brie, butter, cream cheese, onions, paprika, cumin, salt and pepper. Yeah. And then here he has actually the, the beer in it too, but we, I have a recipe here that calls for one kilo brie cheese, which is two pounds of brie. <laughs> so that might be a little bit too much. <laughs> maybe maybe it can skim, skim yes. down the recipe just a we little will. bit, but that, <laughs> no, that's great. No, it's tasty. I, I mean, I love cheese. I know most people, most people love cheese. So it's a, it's a win. It's a winning dish, I would say. Yeah. So thank you so much, Carolyn. Thank you again, Reiner, for the fantastic presentation. Again, we, we've had some great comments uh, in the chat. Uh, everyone really, really enjoyed um, seeing your presentation. And uh, obviously a lot of it's like walking through a fairy tale with the architecture, the landscapes, all of, all of the scenes are, are so beautiful and so welcoming and Charm is the word, right? When, when you see some of these uh, photos of these beautiful German towns.